the atheist types, the rationalist types, there's something they miss. And Oh, I am sure there is a lot we miss. Like, oh, I don't know, the alleged proofs for gods and shit. We tend to miss that constantly. It's almost like it isn't there. We also miss the good old days of athe blabs versus theebists on YouTube, where a theist says something silly and then an atheist makes fun of them for it. Except here, because it will never die on this channel so long as people keep saying really stupid shit. Speaking of, Jordan, what do you have to say for yourself today? What they miss is that fiction isn't false. It's not a lie. Wow, that's a hell of a way to start this thing. Assuming that this incredibly basic ass take is something that only you have figured out. That the people you don't like or disagree with, they could never understand this extremely big brain thing that you've figured out. No, Jordan, everybody knows that. What are you even talking about? Of course, fiction isn't quote unquote false or a lie. It's a goddamn story. That's how stories work. No one is picking up the Lord of the Rings and banging on about about how, well, it didn't actually happen, therefore it has no value, I guess. Head-ass take, that is. Right, it's not literal, but it's not a lie. Well, that is the thing, and something that you clearly don't understand. No one is saying that the Bible, or religious texts in general, aren't true, therefore bad. It's that they aren't f***ing historical documents, a thing that many, many Christians believe to be the case. And whether you do or not, the fact that there's people trying to change the world based on the contents of what you yourself are calling fiction, well again, try taking a new law to Congress about, say, mining, and that they shouldn't dig too greedily and too deep, lest you awake the f***ing Balrog. You would be laughed out of the goddamn room. But unfortunately, the same thing doesn't happen for the f***ing Bible, and that's a huge goddamn problem. And great fiction is true, but it never happened. So how can it be true? He has his own, um, answer to this, which obviously we'll go into, but uh, let me take a crack at it. Great fiction is true because it's about things. It's about stuff that is true, whether that be philosophical truths or literal truths. The basis of most great fiction, in my eye, is it's trying to get you to think about something. Whether or not the book's obvious or not conclusion is right, the thing that it wants you to consider tends to be something that most people can relate to in some sense. And, if not relate, at least look out into the real world and say, okay, I get what they were going for. So yeah, sure, the story is a story, but the point is what matters. Honestly, it doesn't have to be that kind of deep. And the answer to that is something like, well, there are patterns in things. Deep patterns. I'm 14 and this is deep patterns. I mean, seriously, when you think about it, Jordan really is like an adolescence version of what a smart person looks, sounds and acts like. I have heard him referred to as the idiot's intellectual. But it's not even that. Idiots might be stupid, but they aren't necessarily childish. But this, this shit is for fucking babies, man. Deep recurring patterns. You know, human nature. The fact that we're human. Quote unquote, great books contain things about human nature, therefore they are true. I mean, okay, but again, that's not the point. And, you know, sometimes books people think are great aren't about that. They are prescribed versions of human nature. They don't actually reflect things that are the versions of true. They reflect what the author wants to be true. A thing that the author needs to be true in order to get people to see from their perspective. Despite their perspective not actually reflecting any sort of reality. And we actually have a word for that. It's called religious. The text. Two words. Shut up. That, that the humanity itself is a recurring pattern. It has characteristic shape. It's far too recurring for my tastes. There should be way less of that humanity shit kicking about. I mean, imagine a world with less humans. Now that's a story slash truth I can get behind. In fact, there is a genre of story about empty worlds. One of them I think is called the Empty World. And while a lot of the time the important part of that story is what the characters do and how they react to the things that happen to them and the few people that they may actually meet. My favorite part is how all the people are dead. That's that's the shape I want from all the humans. And great fiction 
describes the shape of that pattern. The shape of that pattern. Ah, good old word salad. It says this kind of shit a lot. And again, to the ickle wickle baby brains of the world, that probably sounds really deep and interesting. But you'll notice he doesn't elaborate. He just says these things and that's it. These are facts to him, but not the boring kind of facts with evidence and proof for them, and certainly not needing of any kind of explanation as to what the f*** it's supposed to mean. Seriously, I have actually seen numerous comments under his videos saying something like, This is so smart. I didn't understand any of it. But that's kind of the thing. Sure, incredibly smart things can be very difficult to understand and require lots of work to do so, but they can be understood. Gibberish will always be gibberish. And the more you try to explain it, the less coherent it becomes. And if that doesn't describe basically everything Geordie Pop says, I don't know what does. And the greatest of fiction, the greater fiction becomes, the more it is religious in nature. And ho, 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 ho off. What a nonsensical statement. And a fucking insulting one at that. All these great books and stories in the world, they are just religious. And again, what does that actually even mean? Because that's the other thing about George. He just uses words like religious to mean thing that I like. But religious has, you know, a fucking meaning. Also, also, the most religious texts, not one of them speaks to me. Not a single one is something that I have found to be great fiction. Although fiction nonetheless. Yeah, sure, there are a lot of people out there who do and will drone on and on about all these things that they've read into it. So, you know, it must be there and intentional to the text. Couldn't just be that you want it to be there. So it is. But I find those books to be both incoherent and fucking boring most of the time. I mean, sure, they try to jazz it up with the odd fire or genocide, but where's the action? Not one car chase in the Bible. Did you know that? I do, because I fucking checked. Zero out of ten, worst book ever. That's not even a, a claim about the nature of truth. It's more a claim about the nature of experience. <laughs> sure, but you know that things experienced that are actually real. They're what now? That's right, the square hole. Sorry, I mean, true. Although, the, the square hole thing seems strangely apt. Because everything Jordan says, he, he thinks it's this rich tapestry of complex shapes that can only be understood through his very clever lens of smartness from this particular angle. But they all fit in the square hole. Because it's ultimately a bunch of simplistic, colourful shapes. You know, when we say something is profound... We know for damn sure that Jorkin didn't say it. Profound things come from me, actually. Well, I, I say profound. I mean, more profound than anything he's ever said. But to be fair, that is not difficult because the profound sounds that come directly from my asshole. I mean, listen. See? Don't tell me that didn't change your fucking life. Mostly by destroying your sense of smell, but still. What we mean is that it's moving. Oh no, everybody get down. The Bible keeps, oh shit, it keeps profounding about. Just, you know, get your heads down and I think you'll be shit. I, I mean, fine, f***ing hell. Who let such a profound thing loose? This is just profoundly irresponsible. <laughs> get it? Ow, f***. And that it has a broad influence. It's capable of having a broad influence on the way we think and see and act. I mean, by that logic, then so many video games and movies and TV shows and comic books and all sorts of other shit are profound because, man, the fandoms of those things get real intense and will act out and try to emulate characters from those pieces of media in weird, life-altering ways. To me, profound isn't really about even being capable of changing you per se, but broadening your horizons. I mean, if you see the world, through a keyhole. Your broad strokes aren't going to change that much when you open the door. The sky will still be blue. There will still be people milling about. And my neighbour still needs to put on some goddamn clothes. But the finer details are now more readily apparent. And the granular nature of reality is far easier to fathom. To me, profound is less about change and more about appreciation of what you know. That might not be true for everyone, but for Jod, there rarely seems to be other ways to think of things apart from what you're supposed to think about things. And I honestly think that's one of his major problems, that and being a smug dumbass. But hey, I had to have something in common with him. 
So if you read a profound book, like one of Dostoevsky's books, Talking of reading, I just got myself a fancy new e-reader, mostly so I can learn how to use them for the kids. Gonna get the kids each one of them as gifts. I know, what a fun dad. Homework for Christmas. A kid, they do actually love to read. And I was thinking about what books I want to read now that I have like a device literally made to do that. And I'm not just talking about the great works. But one of the main reasons that I got it was to actually read Berserk, since it's so influential to a huge amount of the media I enjoy. And so if you have any suggestions for some of those less generally thought about but still really good reads, do let me know in the comments. You could say of that book, and people often do, that it changed my life when I read that book. Okay, that's fair, but again, that's not religious. That's just a thing that happens when one broadens their horizons. Because that's what a lot of the respondents to the question, did Dozy Cozy Boy's work change your life, say when they answer. It's less that they are completely different people now, and more that on particular topics, they have taken a more thoughtful approach to that topic. And not to downplay the importance of that, I generally think for the vast majority of people, calling that life-changing is hyperbolic. Yeah, it might affect certain opinions you have, and it might affect certain decisions that you might make. But it's not like you suddenly dropped everything and went to fight bears in the woods, or whatever his books are about. You're just a bit more worldly now. But frankly, you could get the same effect from in-depth historical study, or going to places where the issues you are looking at are happening, and end up with some of the exact same conclusions. Again, not downplaying them, and of course, well-written characters and plots help with engagement for these things. But books aren't magic. They are convenient. And a story that can change your life has a power that is best described as religious. No, no, it fucking isn't best described as religious. It's best described as a word you literally already used and discussed. It is, in fact, best described as fucking profound. Stop turning every goddamn thing into religion. Your attempt to make it mean basically fucking everything will dilute it until it means absolutely nothing. Religion has a specific meaning. Something can be deeply profound and have no connection to religion. People find scientific text books profound and that is about as far away from any idea of a religion that I can even think of as you can get. And so religious is a kind of experience in some sense rather in addition to a claim about what constitutes truth. As far as I'm concerned religion is entirely an experience but experiencing something and it having any connection to fact or reality or even the version of true that you're talking about is fundamentally not necessary to that experience. In fact, most religious experiences are about things far removed from those kinds of reality and just sit entirely on the individual's feelings. And while their feelings are entirely real to them, they are meaningless to everyone else. And then those stories in Genesis, Cain and Abel, I think, and, and the story of Adam and Eve, because those stories are so deep that it's almost unfathomable. What? Don't be jealous and don't be smart. Yeah, sure, deep as a cum splash. Although to be fair, the real depth in those stories, especially the Adam and Eve one, comes in realizing how profoundly <laughs> stupid they are. God tells someone who can't fathom shit on their own not to do something, then makes it easy, puts it right in front of them, doesn't stop someone else from encouraging them to do so, that even by rights there is no reason he couldn't have stopped them, and then blames them for his trap that he set up. And apparently that was an act of love. Yeah, maybe in an abusive relationship, fucker. They get at the, at the most profound of patterns, and so to say that they're literally true is false. Yeah, we know, because they aren't. But to say that they are even metaphorically true is also fucking stupid. They literally, in the literature, were incapable of understanding what they were doing. Most humans I know are perfectly capable of understanding things they should and shouldn't do. They just choose to or not to do whatever the thing. The choice Adam and Eve had was no choice. How is that even comparable? Is actually to massively underestimate how true they are. <laughs> <laughs> so true that they're not true. I mean, that's so stupid, it goes right the way around to being smart, even stupider. Good job. 
Because you could tell me what you did this morning. And that would be literally true, but like, who cares? I mean, for starters, someone would care. People who love you, people who are interested in your life. I mean, if you're famous, a whole f ton of people would be that. But it also depends on what you did this morning. I mean, sure, most mornings, it's whatever. But the morning that I figure out how to blow up the planet, I'm pretty sure a whole heap of people are probably going to take interest in that literal true fact thing that happened. Honestly, you make it sound like only popular things get to be more profound than others. And you would say that as a bibble boy, but no, popular and big brain smart things are rarely conflated. In fact, some of the most popular things on Earth are f***ing idiotic. It makes you wonder why I haven't got more subscribers, really. Whereas if you read the story of Adam and Eve, it's so true that it applies to everyone always. I can't even begin to fathom what the f*** that could possibly mean. And of course, again, no elaboration. I guess the only thing I can think that it could be is it's because it's an origin story of the peoples, but that's... I mean, it will apply to literally any religion with one. But, well, it's just not true at all. It's not even metaphorically true. It's just nonsense. And mere literal truth can't do that. Mere literal truth cannot apply to all of us. Are you fucking joking? I mean, essentially, all literal truths apply to us, even if only tangentially, from, you know, facts about the universe and the world to even your what you did this morning thing. That also applies to everyone. Everyone did something this morning, but also they existed on the same planet that you're doing, in the same universe that you're doing it, in the same timeline that you did it. They might have done the same things or something so different that it's interesting to compare. Everything this man says is deeply meaningless. It is frankly impressive. And we don't have a good language as scientists, let's say, as psychologists. I like the fact that he sort of downgraded himself from scientist to psychologist. And no, I understand that psychology is a science. I just think that's more him telling on himself. <laughs> or even as citizens, we don't have a good language for that kind of truth. We literally do. It's called profundity and it's called philosophy. You just seem to be ignoring great big swathes of history and knowledge to allow your version of it to be ooh, ah, spooky ghosts magical. It's kind of pathetic, really. And so, well, I, I guess I'd like your thoughts about that idea. Well, it looks like those guys are just completely dumbfounded, but mine, I think that it's pseudo-intellectual garbage, a.k.a. f***ing stupid, but I guess I didn't expect anything less from you. Well done. Wait, before you go, I have something super important to tell you. It's life or death. It will change everything forever. Nope. Wait, it's gone. Oh well, probably wasn't important. But while I have you, don't forget to comment, subscribe and notify. And if you want more of my smexy voice, check out Mrs. Six channel Spoonstar Stories, where I narrate and voice all the videos. And she does the work. And if you want to support the channel, check out the merch store for cool t-shirts, or check out Patreon, memberships and PayPal to support directly. Finally, follow me on the medias of social to get completely pointless guff and to keep up on the latest releases. Oh, I just remembered what I was going to tell you. Whatever you do, don't touch the-